Hello, our service today of Noonday Prayer begins on page 103 of your Books of Common Prayer, or you can access the order of service through our website or on our Facebook page. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 24 through 28. Jesus said, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we turn to your scriptures now, I pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, might meet with each one of us wherever we are and speak and draw us near to your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. So I just want to start today with a question. What brings glory? I imagine that if I asked some of you to think of a hymn that spoke about glory, you might think of the battle hymn of the Republic. It's a tune I know for probably quite different reasons than you. In England, soccer fans love any good anthem or song to use at games with key lyrics replaced with the name of their favorite soccer team. So inevitably, glory, glory, hallelujah, becomes glory, glory, Man United, or glory, glory, Leeds United, or for my team, glory, glory, Wolverhampton. And when is any team at its most glorious? In victory, of course often in the crushing defeat of a weaker team, or preferably the nail-biters, where there is just a goal to separate the teams in the final score. A close battle, but victory secured. I remember when I was about 15, uh, my high school soccer team, which had been founded by my friend Lisa and I, we made it to the finals of the county competition. At halftime, we were down 2-1. As a goalkeeper, I took that particularly hard. But in the second half of the game, as the light of the day was fading, we managed to pull it back, score three more goals, and claim victory. And in doing so, the Championship Cup as well. The final score 
was four goals to two. And I still remember how good that, the glory of that win felt. Our gospel reading today takes us to Jesus as he's telling the disciples about why he came. He begins right before where our reading takes off with ominous words. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. But how was Jesus glorified? How did his glory come? It did not come in victory, success, or the defeat of the opposing side. It did not come in responding to every accusation made about him or resenting his accusers quietly. It did not come through forcing his agenda through for the things he wanted to see happen. It did not come through a campaign to get rid of the Romans or involve him vying for power in and amongst the Sadducees, Pharisees, and other leaders. Jesus' glory came quite unexpectedly through his death. It came through giving up, letting go, allowing the worst to happen. A grain of wheat cannot bear fruit unless it dies, Jesus tells his disciples. Your life will be ruined if you try and love it, he says, if you hold on to it and fight for it. In loving your life, yourself, your reputation, in acting out of your heart's passions and desires, your expectations of your relationships, causes you want to fight for, your desire for safety and security, peace or equity. If you make your life or life's passions your goal, you will ruin it. But if you hate your life in this world, Jesus says, and he means here not so much self-destruction as just putting your life second where and when it gets in the way of God's will. If you learn not to act out of your desires, your worldview, your desire for intimacy, your hobby horses, your securities, if you let go of all of these things, in brackets, for God's will, then you will keep your life eternal. Jesus did not live his life seeking to prove himself in any way, but he lived following God's spirit, loving those who did not deserve love, trusting his heavenly father, and being willing to face accusation, loss of reputation, and most importantly, death itself. He did not go to the cross like a wild horse that needed to be broken. He went like a lamb. And through it, he was glorified. And you and I are called to follow him, to know all that he endured for us and the life he has won for us in his name. We are called to be where he is to serve him as he serves us. And you cannot serve the one who was glorified in death by trying to act in victory, strength, or power of any kind. It is through relinquishment, through letting go, through trust. I recently had an encounter with a much respected friend in the course of our conversation, he challenged me on my views about something that I felt deeply about. I wanted a simple answer, an easy way to think about things. And in his words and wisdom, God invited me to let go of my desires, my desire for simplicity and black and white solutions. And God invited me to dig deeper, to think carefully and to discipline my heart. And I confess, 
I didn't much want to. I like my impulses and the things that I feel righteous about. I didn't want to admit that I was speaking out of my ignorance. I wanted to preserve my ego and not to be tarnished by admitting that I don't know it all. I have a PhD after all. But Jesus calls me, as he calls each one of us, to do exactly that. To not hold on to our own lives, egos, or anything else. To let it go. To give it up. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will raise you up in due time. First Peter 5 tells us. And in doing so, in our following Jesus' approach to glory, one of humility, even humiliation, our eternal lives rest secure. Fruit may even be born, and our Heavenly Father's name glorified. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people may be found on page 387 of your prayer books. Father, we pray for thy holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve thee, that thy name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our Anglican Communion, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops Andy, Jeff, Kay and Hector, for all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of thy word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do thy will in all that we undertake that our works may find favour in thy sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise thee for thy saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in thy heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Donald, our president, Greg, our governor, Sylvester, our mayor, and the Congress and the courts. For all who serve in our armed forces and their families, we pray for peace throughout the world and especially in the Middle East. And we pray for the victims of terror attacks and we remember before you and pray for the protection of our Christian brothers and sisters who face danger or persecution for their faith. 
And we pray for the victims of all natural disasters, especially those affected by the wildfires in California and all those impacted by Hurricane Laura. For the many people who have contracted the coronavirus. For comfort for those grieving loved ones who have died and peace for those who are fearful as the virus spreads. For those in isolation, those who have lost their job or their business, for all those in our communities involved in ministering to the sick, especially for all healthcare workers. We pray for the safety of all law enforcement agents, firefighters, paramedics, and all first responders who provide security and protection to the citizens they serve. We pray for those in the hospitals and those for whom our prayers have been requested and for those in our continuing prayer list and for all the blessings of this life. And we remember before you the departed and we give thanks for their lives and we pray for their loved ones left behind. I invite your own prayers and intercessions. So may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.